iOS 16.1 has been out for two weeks now and I've really been enjoying my time with this update. It is way more stable than iOS 16.0.3 and I also enjoy using some of the new features as well. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and talk a little bit more about iOS 16.1. So here on my iPhone 14 Pro Max, I have iOS 16.1 installed as you can see. This is the final release version. The build number is 20B82. And if you update your iPhone to iOS 16.1, this is the exact same build that you are going to be getting. This came after iOS 16.0.3, and Apple is also working on iOS 16.2, and that is in beta right now. I was considering installing iOS 16.2, however, after thinking about it for a little bit, I remembered just how buggy iOS 16.1 was when it was in beta, and I really don't want an experience like that on my daily iPhone. So I think I'm gonna stay on 16.1 for a little while longer as I am enjoying a stable build of iOS on my phone right now. But what I wanna do in this video is share some of my favorite features so far in iOS 16.1, and then talk a little bit about performance and stability. So really quick here, we actually made another video on iOS 16.1 after after it released and we covered every single new feature in this update. So if you missed that video, you can click the link in the top right to watch it right now. But let's go ahead and talk about some of my favorite features so far with iOS 16.1. And the first one is the new battery icon. So before iOS 16.1, the battery icon for me was really, really annoying because every time I would look at my battery icon in my status bar, it would appear as if my battery were at 100%. And that's because the battery icon didn't actually reflect what your battery level was and you had to rely on the text inside the battery icon. So I don't know if it's just my brain because the text was there, it was telling me what my battery is, but for whatever reason, I thought that my battery was always at 100%. I don't know if it was a visual thing or what, but here in 16.1, it is so much better. We still have the text that shows our actual battery level, but the battery icon itself is actually falling throughout the day and giving us a visual representation of what our battery is at. So a really good improvement in 16.1 for the battery icon. The next feature is live activities. So live activities finally work for applications on the App Store. I actually think with iOS 16, developers are taking advantage of the dynamic island on the iPhone 14 for live activities more than they are for the widgets on the lock screen. There's an application I've been using called Sports Alerts, and this is how I use my dynamic island for live activities pretty much every single day. If I open it up here and then select a hockey game like this one, for example, I can click the menu icon and I can start the live activity. And if I swipe up to go home, you can see that that game I'm following is now live in my dynamic island. And if the game were happening right now, we'd also see the score up here as well. And if you swipe down into your lock screen, your live activities are also here as well. Something I find myself doing every now and then when I have a live activity is if I go to put my iPhone down or on a charger, instead of locking my iPhone, I'm just gonna swipe down into my lock screen and leave it on this screen. This is a lot brighter than the always on display and lets me keep tabs on all of my live activities a lot easier. Another small thing I've noticed on 16.1 is on the lock screen and it has to do with the clock and the depth effect. So I've noticed on 16.1 that this depth effect you can get with your wallpapers is a lot more prominent. So before in 16.0.3, you couldn't really get that much depth over the clock, but since I updated to iOS 16.1, I've noticed that some of my wallpapers can almost cover up the clock completely. So if you're going for that really cool depth effect look on your lock screen, it's definitely gonna be a lot more prominent on 16.1. A few other things I noticed on 16.1 one include much better battery life. I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, so battery life was never a huge issue for me. However, on iOS 16.0.1 all the way to 16.0.3, my battery was absolutely horrendous. The next day after updating to iOS 16.1, I really didn't think there was any improvement. However, after I gave it a few days, I can now say that my battery life on 16.1 is the best I've ever had on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. So it only ended up 
up taking about a month to get my good battery life back, but I can finally say that my 14 Pro Max has the exact same battery as my iPhone 13 Pro Max, and that is with the always on display turned on. So I can only imagine how good the battery would be if I turn the always on display off. And I'm also noticing a bunch of improvements in terms of accessories that connect and communicate with the iPhone. The first one is the batteries widget. On iOS 16.0.3, I had this really annoying bug where the accessories in my batteries widget would not update and the only way to update it was to lock my phone and unlock it. I'm noticing that my batteries widget on 16.1 is a lot more reliable. Another one is Bluetooth connections. So let me know in the comments if you are experiencing this as well, but I found that on iOS 16.1, my Bluetooth connections are a lot faster and more reliable. One example I can give you is whenever I get into my car, I have a infotainment system in my car that connects automatically to my iPhone. And after I updated to iOS 16.1, I found that my iPhone was connecting a lot faster to my car. And another thing in terms of connections has to do with my iPhone talking to my Apple Watch in terms of music. Before on iOS 16.0.3, whenever I was in a workout and I would swipe to change my music, this UI was really laggy and half the time it just wouldn't work. And I'm finding that controlling my music on my watch is a lot more reliable now that I have my iPhone on 16.1. The final thing I want to mention has to do with the always on display on my 14 Pro. So many people know that on the 14 Pro, you actually don't have to tap the screen and then swipe up. You can actually just unlock your phone right from the always on display by swiping up right from here. On 16.0.3, every now and then my swipe wouldn't be detected. But here on 16.1, whenever my always on display is activated and I swipe up from the bottom, it's unlocking my phone a lot faster than before. So those are all of the new features and improvements that I enjoy using on 16.1. Now quickly at the end of the video, I wanna cover some of the bugs I've been encountering as well. Before I start, I still wanna say that 16.1 is indeed more stable than 16.0.3. With that said, I still am seeing a few bugs in my day-to-day -day usage. This first one is really strange. If I go to my lock screen, you can see that the widget above my time is set up to be the date. However, whenever I go into a landscape application and then swipe down, you can see that without me doing anything, the widget has magically changed and it's now showing the weather instead of the date. I've actually never edited this lock screen to have the weather above the time, so I have absolutely no idea why my widgets are changing on their own, but tell me in the comments if you are experiencing this as well. Another bug I'm experiencing, and it seems like a lot of people are also seeing this in 16.1, is the weather application. Whenever I open the weather application, especially in the morning when I haven't opened it in a while, the loading screen just stays blank. Nothing loads in the weather application. I have a screenshot right now that you can take a look at. Whenever I open my weather app in the morning, half the time it looks like this. So it's a really annoying bug that Apple needs to fix immediately. And then one final bug I wanna cover, and I don't even know if I can call it a bug just because it only happened one time, is overheating. So a few days ago, I was sitting on my couch and I wasn't even charging my iPhone. I wasn't even doing anything intensive. And all of a sudden, my iPhone got burning hot to the touch. It got really hot in the area right below the camera on the back glass. And it was so hot, I couldn't even touch my phone. And I'm not even exaggerating. I've never felt a phone get this hot in my life. What I had to do is I turned off my phone completely and then I actually went ahead and put it in my fridge for 10 to 15 minutes to let my iPhone cool down. After I turned my iPhone on from that point, I haven't had any overheating since, so that may have just been an isolated issue, but it definitely was quite annoying when it happened. So let me know in the comments if you have had any overheating problems on 16.1. That's gonna do it for my one week review of iOS 16.1. I feel like I've said it a million times throughout this video, but head down to the comments and tell me your thoughts. I genuinely want this channel to be more than just a one-sided conversation, and I love to hear what you guys have to say. So definitely make sure to head down to the comments and tell me your thoughts. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB, and I'll see you next time.